Item number SCP-3250, Object Class, Safe, Special Containment Procedures. A sample of the original Kentucky Fried Chicken 11 Secret Herbs and Spices is to be kept in a standard safe class item locker in Site-88. A digital copy of the recipe is available on the Site-88 database. Widespread reproduction of SCP-3250's effects has been made impossible due to the exclusive rights of Kentucky Fried Chicken to market and sell chicken flavored in its trademark secret recipe, as well as the acquisition of the Beep Family Plantation through a foundation front and the subsequent monopoly established on the Beep Variety Peppercorn. Public knowledge of the substitution of Kentucky Fried Chicken's secret 11 secret herbs and spices recipe is to be suppressed. Description SCP-3250 is a perceptual anomaly affecting individuals who have consumed pressure cooked fried chicken seasoned with Kentucky Fried Chicken's proprietary 11 secret herbs and spices for a period of time after consumption. People affected by the anomaly will perceive depictions of Jesus Christ as being altered to resemble American businessman and restauranter Colonel Harlan David Sanders, clad in his trademark white suit and bolo tie. Altered depictions will be of similar art style to the original. All manner of visual depictions are affected, including circular depictions. The perceived degree of resemblance between depictions of Christ and Colonel Sanders diminishes with time, fading completely after one to two hours following consumption of a typical three-piece chicken meal. Consuming larger quantities of chicken results in this effect persisting for longer. An upper limit to this effect has been reported at approximately 72 hours following consumption of an entire 20-piece chicken bucket in one sitting. Based on analysis of Kentucky Fried Chicken sales and church attendance in the United States, it is estimated that at least 150,000 North Americans have at one time been affected by SCP-3250 since the first report case of the anomaly in January 1974. Reports of manifestations outside the North American continent have been sparse, likely due to substitution of the highly perishable and locally sought beef variety peppercorns used in the seasoning recipe in foreign markets. The majority of SCP-3250 cases are believed to remain unreported due to the temporary nature of the effect and the natural human tendency to preserve normality and maintain a consensus reality. History Prior to identification of its source, knowledge of SCP-3250 was suppressed through localized distribution of amnestics whenever encountered by field agents. This was sufficient to catalyze self-suppression among affected members of the populace. Extensive testing conducted by Site-88 researchers determined the factors for its cause in 1974. Full-scale containment of SCP-3250 was soon enacted, culminating in the infiltration of Kentucky Fried Chicken's Louisville headquarters by a Joint Foundation UIU Task Force in April 1975. Embedded agents were successful in accessing the locked safe containing the anomalous recipe and replacing it with a gustatorily similar substitute. Contracts with Griffith Laboratories and McCormick and Company were also altered accordingly by COVID agents, allowing the replacement recipe to propagate throughout the North American supply chain in a matter of months. Total containment of SCP-3250 is believed to have been completed by October of the same year. In December 1975, following his public statement on the altered quality of Kentucky Fried Chicken's recipes, referred to document 3250H066, Sanders was designated as POI 3250 and placed under COVID observation. A settlement was privately reached with Sanders in 1976 through Foundation contacts in Hopling Inc., then parent company of Kentucky Fried Chicken, offering a payout of one million U.S. dollars as compensation. 
Regardless, Sanders continued to publicly denigrate the quality of Kentucky Fried Chicken's culinary standards and maintained the assertion that his original recipes had been altered by Hilfen Inc. until his death in 1980. Investigation into Sanders and his association with esoteric clandestine organizations continued until his death in 1980, finding nothing unusual in both his history and former ties. It was concluded that Sanders was neither aware of nor responsible for the SCP-3250 phenomenon. Addendum List of notable SCP-3250 manifestations requiring foundation suppression. Site number 1. Date, January 9th, 1974. Citing details. Three patrons of the Beep Church in Bellahy, Mississippi, claimed to have seen a depiction of Colonel Harlan David Sanders in the stained glass windows of the church. As this sighting was not shared by any other church patrons, it passed without incident. This is the earliest recorded sighting of an SCP-3250 manifestation. Sighting number 12. Date. February 16th, 1974. Sighting details. 36-year-old Howard Brooks of Haley, Florida, reported the theft of an Renaissance-era painting of Jesus Christ in his holiday home and its replacement with a painting in similar style of Colonel Sanders. As the SCP-3250 manifestation was observable only to Brooks alone, it was ignored by local authorities. Subsequent investigation by UIU agents revealed that Brooks had consumed Kentucky Fried Chicken for lunch. A connection was noted between this anomalous occurrence and 11 others, leading to the UIU's initial classification of the SCP-3250 phenomenon. Foundation assistance was later requested due to the scale of the phenomenon, which was established to be too large to handle with existing UIU resources alone. Sighting number 13. Date, April 14th, 1974. Sighting detains. D-01776 was served a three-piece meal of original recipe Kentucky Fried Chicken and directed to a consumer, which she did in one sitting. D-01776 was then shown a statue of Christ on the cross and asked to describe it. D-01776 reported the statue depicted a crucified Colonel Sanders grimacing in pain and boiling palm oil oozing from his hands. This was the first successful replication of an SCP-3250 manifestation in containment. Efforts to alter the 11 secret herbs and spices recipe began. Sighting number 234. Date, May 9th. 1974. Citing details. A group of 12 tourists in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, reported the alteration of the statue of Christ the Redeemer into an equally sized statue of Colonel Sanders with arms outstretched and holding a fried chicken drumstick in each hand. The tourists were investigated by Foundation agents who learned that they had shared a meal of Kentucky Fried Chicken at the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport two hours prior to their departure. This is so far the only recorded SCP-3250 manifestation outside the North American continent, and was successfully covered up through the use of Class B amnestics. Sighting number 458. Date, July 1974, estimated. Sighting details. In the largest sighting to date, beep civilians in the town of Van Gogh, Iowa, reported a 50-foot-high sighting of Colonel Sanders in the sky above their hometown shortly after church service. The apparition remained for 12 minutes before dissipating. It was later determined that Kentucky Fried Chicken had been supplied for mass catering at the church's lunch buffet. This is the largest known sighting to date, occurring shortly before the successful replacement of the original recipe. The resultant mass hysteria caused by this sighting is documented in Incident Report 3250-10927. Addendum, Incident Report 3250-10927, Level 3 Eyes Only. Incident Summary 
Reports of missing truckers in the vicinity of CRW66, Misa County, Iowa, are traced to the town of Van Gogh. Population 146. The responsibility for investigating the disturbance was assigned to the Federal Bureau Investigations and Mutual Incidents Unit due to local foundation resources being diverted to the mass cover-up of SCP-3250. On August 9, 1974, UIU Special Agents C. Lewis and D. Tucker were eventually deployed to the locale. At 0930 hours, the agents report discovering the packages of seven tractor trailers and a one-way truck map 1.2 miles from Van Gogh. An investigation reveals the severely burnt and decomposed remains of the missing truckers. Judging from the evidence present, namely the charred stains of the passenger seat and driver's seat, the lack of any burn damage to the vehicles, signs of forced entry via blunt instrument, and the cinder block bricks duct taped to the gas pedal of each vehicle. Agent Lewis surmises that the truckers were immolated after exiting their vehicle and placed back into the seat, after which their vehicles were sent on cruise control down the highway until they each crashed into the ramp. At 1010 hours, Agents Lewis and Tucker report a strange smell of burning oil and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Throughout this, a loud cracking is heard in the background. Agent Tucker claims that the crackling sound is not due to radio static. Radio contact is soon lost. Contact is only re-established at 1021 hours with severely reduced audio quality. Agent Lewis checks in, reporting that their car was ambushed by an improvised grease-based incendiary trap and that sporadic gunfire from unseen assailants forced him to abandon their vehicle and proceed on foot. They find shelter in an empty house, further reporting that the majority of houses in Van Gogh appear to be devoid of occupants. Agent Lewis disobeys their direct order to remain in place and leads Agent Tucker on to investigate the situation. They proceed to move from house to house, narrowly avoiding a patrol of men and women clad in golden brown cloaks and armed with hunting rifles. Meanwhile, UIU Local Command links up with Foundation Contacts, explains the situation. In conjunction with UIU Special Agent K. Milford, MTF-546, the King's Men, is mobilized to secure the town of Van Gogh. At 10.29 hours, loud crunching noises were heard. Agent Tucker reports that the ground nearer to the town center is covered in deep-fried chicken parts. Upon closer inspection, the chicken parts appear to be carefully arranged as to point towards the town's Southern Baptist Church. The agents proceed to approach the church to investigate. At 10.34 hours, another set of crunching noises were heard in the distance. Soon the radio feed is cut. Following this, no further radio contact can be established with either agent. The armed convoy bearing MTF-546 sights Van Gogh at 1200 hours, confirming the presence of the crashed tractor trailers and the burnt wreckage of the agent's car. Civilian resistance surrenders quickly at the sight of the convoy, believing them to be National Guard, and are quickly subdued with Class A amnestics. Agents Lewis and Tucker are found alive in a ditch adjacent to the burning church, where they had taken shelter following the detonation of the improvised explosive device. Both agents were treated for minor smoke inhalation, but otherwise suffered no injuries. Objects and entities recovered by MTF Pi 46 include paraphernalia depicting Jesus Christ, ranging from pendants to crucifixes, the face to appear as Colonel Sanders, handwritten photocopied flyers advertising the Reformed Church of the Colonel, five tons of chicken, both raw and deep fried, two tons of original recipe, eleven secret herbs and spices found stashed in various homes, a marble font. Equipped with a heater and filled with oil, apparently acting as a deep fat fryer. A King James Bible with the majority of the words blacked out with marker pen. The remaining words describe the 11 secret herbs and spices recipe. Object was located inside a locked safe beneath the puppet of the local church. A large amount of assorted armament, including hunting rifles, handguns, 
homemade incendiary bombs, and one leaf blower converted to spray boiling oil. 146 residents of Van Gogh, dressed in golden brown oil-soaked rags, bearing various degrees of burn injuries, they were able to provide consistent details of SCP-3250 sighting 458, but could not remember anything else afterwards. One human corpse affixed to a wooden crucifix and coated in deep-fried 11 secret herbs and spices batter. Corpse was an identical visual match for Colonel Harlan David Sanders, who was at the time alive and under Foundation surveillance in Abbeville, Louisiana. Genetic sampling of the corpse returns a perfect match for Gaulus Gaulus Domesticus, the domestic chicken. Origins of corpse and reason for its genetic makeup remain unknown. Item number SCP-4486 Object Class Keta Security Level 4 Special Containment Procedures Due to its ability to instantaneously translocate, SCP-4486 is currently uncontained. MTF Kappa-3, Happy Helpers, has been assigned to monitor SCP-4486 and maintain a discreet presence during any events where the appearance of SCP-4486 is anticipated. The Foundation Office of Budget and Finance has approved a trust which will contribute 100,000 US dollars per annum to the Ronald McDonald House Charities, payable quarterly. Any adjustments to this contribution based on the rate of inflation are automatically approved. Description SCP-4486 is an amalgamated thought form entity, note, sometimes referred to as a topa, endowed with limited retrocausal control over local reality, or third form of SCP-4486 is transitory, contravailing aesthetics depict the entity as a humanoid approximately 2.2 meters in height, wearing a company-branded apparel resembling that of a clown. SCP-4486 also has the ability to manifest at any and all McDonald's franchises, offices, affiliated properties, or events that may contain associations to the McDonald's brand. SCP-4486 often manifests for the explicit purpose of promoting McDonald's or expanding the reach of the brand. The most common application of this power is the creation of a new franchise restaurant, as well as the integration of this new building into a local reality. Secondary effects of this power include fabricating memories of the building's construction and advertisement within the local community, as well as selecting members of the local population to work at the restaurant. New employees are able to describe vivid memories of having applied to and been interviewed for their jobs, as well as a degree of training for their new position. Recovered documentation suggests that SCP-4486 was originally created in 1955, where it was employed as a guiding voice in business decisions for Maurice and Richard McDonald and their business partner Ray Kroc. In 1960, after years of attachment to corporate zeitgeist, SCP-4486 accumulated enough cohesive reality to manifest in real space, where it then became a face for the brand. The McDonald's Corporation employed a number of divisionary tactics, including paid actors, to obfuscate the true nature of SCP-4486. The McDonald's Corporation was successful in concealing these events, until a McDonald's spontaneously manifested in the Site-19 mess hall in 1993. Although an investigation was opened into this matter, the nature of SCP-4486 prevented a full understanding of its abilities until leads were provided by the events of Addendums 1, 2, and 3. Addendum 4486-1 Communications from the estate of Richard MacDonald in 1998 Foundation investigators received a parcel of letters from the estate of the recently deceased Richard MacDonald. This parcel catalogs communications from Ray Kroc, McDonald's personal friend and business partner, although Richard and his brother had sold the company to Mr. Kroc many years prior. 
They continued to exchange ideas and communicate openly until Quark's passing in 1984. The letters, which relate explicitly to SCP-4486, have been attached below. File 4486-1 7th of June, 1961 Richard, it has been a pleasure and an honor to know you and Maurice as well as the latest addition to your family, Ronald. With this step forward, I promise to carry the legacy of friendly service, good food, and affordable prices to the furthest corners of this great nation. And Ronald will be with me every step of the way, just as you envisioned your sons taking over for you. Ronald will learn the trade alongside me until he's ready to make us all proud. You're in good hands. Best, Ray Kroc. 25th of February, 1966. Richard, the boy has gotten so big and so strong. Looking down the road and seeing these golden arches casting the light down on him makes my heart swell with pride. Having said that, I hope he had some time to refute his conduct lately. While I know we all encourage his personal growth, I don't think anyone expected things to take off this quickly. I worry it might be too much for him. This life can move awfully fast. Maybe you can talk to him for me and see how he's holding up. He's not stopping by much anymore. Best, A. Croc. 21st of December, 1971. Note, this date was noted as 10 days after the death of Richard McDonald's brother and fellow co-founder, Maurice McDonald. Richard, you know I will always be there for you. No one could ever replace Maurice, but... Ronnie needs strong parental figures in his life now more than ever. He is no longer responding to me at all. Even when I did the ritual from store one, I fear for his state of mind. I hope you write me soon with good news. We all need each other now more than ever. Thinking of you, Ray. 3rd of March, 1974. Richard. Enclosed are three more photos of new McDonald's that Ronnie has opened. I've only located these three since Christmas, but we both know there are more out there. Ronnie is the only explanation for this, and I wish you would take this as seriously as it deserves. I get it. I can be a comedurgeon, but I'm not above lying out here and speaking to you face to face if you won't help me confront this. I don't want our most precious memories of the time we had together tainted by a breakdown in communication or the callousness of old age. Maurice, Ronnie, you and me, all together again like the family we were meant to be. I yearn for the day, but it is still many years down the road. Let's hold on to what we can. Let's do Maurice's memory justice. Corn, Ronnie. He'll listen to you. Best. Ray. 25th of May, 1974. Richard. Ronnie came to me at my home. I know you must have spoken to him because I could see the contempt in his eyes. He feels I betrayed him. What did you say to him? Whatever it was, I hope it was at least the truth. I could always count on you for that before. And I will need to count on you for that again. We are old now, but we can still do some good. Please, come to store one. It has to be us that does it. Best way. Addendum 4486-2 A record from the estate of Richard McDonald, also attached to the parcel, was a VHS tape bearing a plain white label that reads, The Basement, 1974. The age of the VHS tape and the quality of the video indicates that it is likely not the original, although it is unknown how many copies exist. This video depicts Richard McDonald sitting in a study recounting their attempt to power down SCP-4486 and has been transcribed below. File 4486-2 Begin recording. The tape begins with the face of Richard McDonald near the camera as he had just focused and affirms the recording device is working. Also present on screen is Ray Kroc, seated in a chair in the background. 
The room is an interior study lit only by the fireplace. MacDonald, looking bewildered, waits nearly three minutes before finally speaking. When my brother and I first dreamt up Ronald, it was from a place of profound hope and love. Someone to mentor and teach and to share the same ambition and passion for the business that we had. He was the visionary we needed to take us to the next level. McDonald lifts up a mug and takes a short drink. He removes a flask from the desk drawer and pours an nip into the mug before taking another drink. We loved him so much that, well, he truly was a part of my family. My sin, though, was in realizing far too late that ideas can take on lives of their own. Once you give them to the world, they are never truly yours again. Ever, no matter what you say or do or beg or plead. Croc, seated in the background, leaned forward and placed his hand on McDonald's shoulder for comfort. I was never a father in the traditional sense. Never had kids of my own. Stepchildren through the missus. But, but not ones I raised from birth. For me, that true son was Ronnie. McDonald steers off into the fire, and Ray Kroc gets up from his seat, moving into the foreground next to McDonald. And when you love your children, you want the best for them. You'll do anything to help them succeed, to see them happy. And we did plenty of that for Ronnie. But kids, as much as they are the fruit of your tending and your caring, they are also their own people. Ronnie is no exception. We love him, but what he did is unforgivable. Unforgivable. Croc pulls out a chair and sits in front of the camera, angling it away from McDonald and toward himself. We decided Ronnie needed to go back from where he came. Richard and I, and the other fellas that helped raise him, we all agreed, so we met up where it started, to do it together. But something was wrong from the start. Knew it the moment we walked into the basement. There's a call Richard and I know that'll bring him instantly. He started resisting mine, but he ain't never failed to answer when we were all together. We had to repeat the damn thing three four times before he showed. He could tell we were anxious, and he showed the same like back at us. Ronnie said we didn't understand that he had grown beyond us, said we were small and simple-minded, said he was McDonald's now, and he wasn't wrong. We surrounded him, just like a book said to do, and started to say all of the words. Ronnie didn't like that one bit, got bigger and meaner and taller than I've ever seen. He went to poor George. Note, presumably George Furry, an actor who portrayed Ronald McDonald from 1968 to 1970, burst and put his arm clear through his chest. The blood sprayed on the back wall, making a giant goddamn him, like something from a comic book. At least he died quick. And Willard, King, Beth, I down the lines that they didn't mean a thing to him. Parts and blood and cuts everywhere. While Ronnie just smiled. While I screamed and begged him to stop. That's right. Until it was just down to the three of us. He lunged at me like he was going to do it. And I buckled. And ain't gonna pretend I didn't damn near soil myself right there. But for the sake of Maurice's legacy. And what scrapes were left of my pride. I stayed put next to Richard, closed my eyes real tight, but Ronnie didn't kill us. When I opened my eyes again, the anger and the hatred in, on his face were just gone. He stared deep into me and says, Why, Dad? Why are you doing this? MacDonald finally looks back at the camera, shoulders slouched and head hanging low. He just asked me why and every fiber of my being wanted to hug him and tell him he was good and that it was me that had failed him. Everything I 
ever needed to say, rushed up all at once and choked me. And I, I, I didn't, couldn't say anything. Several minutes passed. Quark puts a hand on McDonald's shoulder again, reassuring him as he cries. Ronnie cried his eyes out too. We were surrounded by the blood of our friends, our own tears, and the ashes of our family. Then Ronnie just left. I don't know where to go from here. Another minute passes before Quark leans forward and turns the camera off. End recording. Addendum 4486-3 The following memorandum was issued internally to the Board of Directors and all other executive staff within McDonald's Corporation. A copy was obtained after a search of the personal effects of Richard McDonald. To Board of Directors From Ray Clark Esteemed member of the Board, it is the sincere wish of Richard McDonald and the estate of Maurice McDonald, the founders of this great company, that a charity be founded, which will bear the name of our most beloved spokesperson and mascot, Ronald McDonald. It is the hope of these great men that the name McDonald can become synonymous with not only with our restaurant, but also with humanitarian deeds and honest charitable works that the entire corporate family can be proud of. The founding principles of the McDonald's Corporation include the love of a family that can sit down and share a meal with one another, putting aside the pettiness of the day or whatever busy activities may keep them apart, together at a dinner table, laughing and smiling over simple good food, just as a good lord intended. It is the belief of Richard and his late brother Maurice that all children deserve happiness, warmth, and a chance at life. Family should be kept together. Ronald can become the symbol of hope to those children in need, if only we let him, if only we help guide him. Thank you. Item number SCP-4953 Security Level 1 Containment Class Keter Disruption Class Eki Risk Class Caution Special Containment Procedures Foundation Agents Embedded in Restaurant Brands International Incorporated Note Parent Company of Burger King are to conduct marketing campaigns portraying SCP-4953 as a promotion for the company. These marketing campaigns are to portray SCP-4953 as reclusive and camera shy and suggest customers refrain from directly interacting with the entity. In the event of a manifestation, Foundation AIs are to alert nearby response teams and provide a live security feed for the duration of the event. Foundation web crawlers are to analyze posts regarding the anomaly and remove information about the entity's anomalous nature. Amnestics are to be administered to witnesses only in the event SCP-4953-1 manifests or SCP-4953 displays anomalous behavior beyond its manifestation. Should SCP-4953 manifest near Foundation personnel, an interview is to be conducted. See document 4953 interview for guidelines. Nearby civilians are to be amnesticized following the interview. Description SCP-4953 is a humanoid entity resembling a middle-aged human male. It wears a gold crown and clothing reminiscent of medieval royalty. SCP-4953 has been seen carrying medieval-era weaponry, such as swords and battle axes, but has never shown hostility towards a civilian unless provoked. SCP-4953 is capable of manifesting in any Burger King licensed restaurant. SCP-4953 will always appear to enter and exit through a doorway. It is impossible for viewers to directly observe the entity appearing. The entity can exist in only one location at a time and manifests on average once every two to three days. Manifestations typically last less than 20 minutes and have been occasionally observed to last up to several hours. 
during a manifestation. SCP-4953 will order food from the restaurant. Any order given by the entity to a Burger King employee will be carried out to the best of the employee's ability. Employees ignore customer orders until SCP-4953's requests are fulfilled. Interviewed employees universally believe that actions taken under SCP-4953's command were performed of their own volition and do not consider the entity's orders unusual. Items ordered rarely conform to standard menu items but always consist of ingredients available at the restaurant. SCP-4953-1 is a designation for any entity brought alongside or created by SCP-4953. SCP-4953 creates and repairs SCP-4953-1 instances using hamburger ingredients. These entities appear in a variety of animal and humanoid forms. Humanoid SCP-4953-1 instances are incapable of speech but appear to communicate with SCP-4953 using a rudimentary form of sign language. Addendum 4953-1 Portable Manifestation Log Location, Riverbank, California Items ordered 17 hamburgers, 1 french fry, 1 medium soft drink, 3 napkins Summary of events SCP-4953 consumes the french fry and napkins and parses its crown with the soft drink. It then begins to construct a canine SCP-4953-1 instance using the hamburgers. The meat and bread are used for the body structure, while items such as tomatoes and onions were placed internally, or used to decorate the surface. SCP-4953 finishes the instance by placing a mass of cheese on the head and sealing it closed. Once the entity is complete, it staggers to its feet, taking a few moments to learn to balance on its legs. Once it is able to properly walk, it begins to pace around the restaurant. The canine entity shows affection towards SCP-4953 and civilians, and allows a group of children to play with it. The canine saliva appears to be composed of mustard, which it leaves streaks of on objects and people it licks. The parents of one of the children, upon seeing him covered in mustard, express agitation towards SCP-4953 and ask it to restrain the SCP-4953-1 instant. SCP-4953 apologizes to the parents, picks up the canine entity, and scouts it before exiting. Item Colorado Springs, Colorado Items ordered 10 hamburgers, 3 boxes of chicken fries Summary of events A humanoid SCP-4953-1 instance missing its left leg manifests alongside SCP-4953. The SCP-4953-1 instance uses a cane composed of a plastic material to walk. SCP-4953 constructs a replacement leg using the hamburgers, shaping them into a cylinder with a joint in the center, and attaches it to SCP-4953-1 using pickles as an adhesive. Using its new leg, the instance is able to walk without its cane, but appears to have difficulty balancing. The two entities have a conversation while they consume the chicken fries together. They discuss a battle, with SCP-4953 boasting about enemies it has defeated, and SCP-4953-1 signing enthusiastically. At one point, SCP-4953 stands up and acts out several sword thrusts using the cane. Location, Toronto, Canada. Items ordered. Two hamburgers, one with extra mayonnaise, one burger wrapper, one straw. Summary of events. SCP-4953 manifests with a large laceration on its left arm. Condiments such as ketchup and mayonnaise leak from the injury rather than blood. The entity staggers while it walks and appears distressed by its injury, breathing heavily and grasping at wound. The server empties an entire container of mayonnaise onto the hamburger. SCP-4953 insert one end of the straw into the mayonnaise and the other end into its arm. Note, in the location of the median cubital vein in humans, often used for IV insertion, mayonnaise is siphoned through the straw and into the entity's arm. 
sliced onions were used along with a needle to soothe the injury. Letters from the second hamburger is applied to laceration, which appears to fuse with the entity's skin, and a wrapper is used to dress the wound. SCP-4953 remains until the majority of the mayonnaise has been siphoned. It apologizes to the servers for its actions before leaving. Location, Chihuahua, Mexico. Items ordered. Three hamburgers, a large soft drink, six french fries. Summary of offense, a civilian points a knife at SCP-4953 and demands it to give him its crown. SCP-4953 opens its soft drink and throws the contents into the civilian's face. The soft drink appears to act as an irritant, causing a rash to develop and irritate his eyes. SCP-4953 then tackles him, pointing the knife from his hand as they fall to the ground. SCP-4953 keeps the civilian pinned to the ground until he yields. SCP-4953 helps the civilian stand up. It compliments his fighting spirit, but warns him that there will be no mercy should the civilian attack it again. SCP-4953 gives the civilian a french fry before motioning him to the door. Location, Epswich, United Kingdom. Items ordered. Three large cans of french fries, two hamburgers. Summary of offense. SCP-4953 manifests riding an equine. SCP-4953-1 instance, decorated with complex patterns made of onions and tomatoes. SCP-4953 feeds the SCP-4953-1 instance the french fries, including the paper cans. SCP-4953 climbs over the counter and uses the computer to print a message on the receipt. SCP-4953 begins to construct an avian SCP-4953-1 instance using the hamburgers. The entity animates before its head has been attached and flies around the restaurant for several minutes, while SCP-4953 attempts to catch it. This excites the crying entity, causing it to gather around the restaurant, knocking over tables and customers. SCP-4953 is eventually able to subdue both of the entities and finish constructing the avian SCP-4953-1 instance. SCP-4953 then attaches the printed message to the avian's leg and exits with it. Addendum 4953-2 Interview Log On the 22nd of December 2019, SCP-4953 manifests in the same restaurant Agent Ingram was eating at. The entity ordered 18 hamburgers and a soft drink. The following interview was conducted while SCP-4953 waited for its order. Interviewed, SCP-4953, Interviewer, Agent Ingram. Location, Burger King and Pablo, Colorado. Begin log. Excuse me, can I speak with you? Oh, forgive my surprise, subject. It's not often that I'm approached by your kind. Speak as you wish. All right. Can you tell me where you came from? From the battlefield, as you might be able to tell. I apologize if my appearance offends the eye. I have been hard-pressed to find time to restore my garments. Your clothes are fine. Tell me about this battlefield. Is it possible for someone other than yourself to go there? What a strange question! Less strange, I suppose, to one unfamiliar with my realm. Tell me, does your kind understand war? Uh, yes. Then I would expect you to know what a blessing it is to be away from the fighting. Whether you could return with me, I cannot say. But I think it best you fight your own battles. I'm with... I work with a scientist... We're researching how your dimension to next two hours. I can respect the pursuit of science, but truth be told, it's not something I can explain. We're not exactly supposed to be using the restaurant. It's one of the oldest treaties to keep the war on our own front. Treaties? Are there more entities like you? Indeed, though you likely won't meet them in person. Not all are kings, mind you. My ally, Horden, prefers to fight alongside his soldiers. Not that I don't end up fighting scuffles on my own. 
You should have seen my duel with Jack at Greece's Edge. Bad over the ages it was. Tell me about this war. How long have you been fighting? It is a war as old as time. Just as your kind swabbles with coins and numbers, we fight by shield and blade. While I sometimes regret the bloodshed, competition is the only way to keep righteous empires like my own on top. I'm sure you understand. I'm not sure if I understand what it is you're fighting over. The beef, my friend, the beef. Should our world be just or would just be under the domain of a Burger King? Can you elaborate? SCP-4953 is ordinate number discord. I'm sorry, but this real conversation must end. The tyrant Arby approaches fast on this occasion, and my army needs these supplies. I bet you farewell. Hold on, who's tyrant Arby? He's coming here. SCP-4953 does not respond. It retrieves his order and demanifests. End log. Addendum 4953-3. As a result of Agent Ingram's interview, a Foundation response team was stationed near the Pablo Burger King. The following week, restaurant chain Arby's purchased a building nearby the location to open a new restaurant. Whether this is related to SCP-4953 is currently unknown. Item Number SCP-CN-2405 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-CN-2405 is contained at Standard Humanoid Containment Unit 2479 at Site CN-75 and is to be provided food brought from McDonald's for sustenance. Due to SCP-CN-2405's prior mental state, all requests for interview must be conducted with the presence of a member of the Site's Counseling Department. Description SCP-CN-2405 is a male human named Ronald McDonald, suffering from dementia, fatty liver, diabetes, and cerebral arteriosclerosis. When SCP-CN-2405 is submerged in water, the submerged section will begin to swell and heat up, reaching as high as 185 degrees Celsius, and will recover after being removed from water. Parts of SCP-CN-2405 that have undergone the process emit a cumin-like odor and are often described as being tender and juicy. SCP-CN-2405's primary anomaly is its loss of legal portrait rights. At birth on 1900, March 14th, at zero hours, SCP-CN-2405 did not possess portrait rights, as they had been sold to the McDonald's Corporation despite it not existing at the time. Even though Ray Kroc, 1902, January 14th to 1983, January 14th, did not have direct access to SCP-CN-2405 or its information at the time he founded McDonald's, SCP-CN-2405's likeness was held as a legal property of McDonald's Corporation as soon as it was founded. As such, any incident involving McDonald's Corporation and the image of Ronald McDonald as a character will be reflected onto SCP-CN-2405. According to official record, SCP-CN-2405's current state was designed by Michael Polakoff's 1923, February 23rd, to 2009, December 6th, in 1966, it has been understood through interviews that this image was inspired by Michael Polakoff's character of Coco the Clown, which had been inherited from his father and his experience in the Barnum and Bailey Circus. However, he believed that the source of this image was not related to SCP-CN-2405 itself. In response, records of the birth of SCP-CN-2405 were presented, showing its red hair soaked in amniotic fluid, and removal of the baby's body, which was found to have white skin, wearing yellow gloves, yellow jumpers, and a red and white striped shirt and socks. SCP-CN-2405's shoes 
pose a significant obstacle to delivery of the baby. Barring the delivery, Lucy McDonald, SCPCN 2405's mother, developed a vaginal infection due to the red lipstick and white foundation possessed by the newborn SCPCN 2405. According to SCPCN 2405's parents, SCPCN 2405 refused normal breast milk and baby food and was able to maintain normal growth subsisting only on Coca-Cola and fried chicken. This continued until SCPCN 2405 developed permanent teeth, after which SCPCN 2405 was able to chew foods and consume a normal human diet. However, it continued to prefer Coca-Cola and fried chicken. In 1940, Richard and Morris McDonald opened the Dick and Mac McDonald restaurant. SCPCN 2405 once again began to refuse a standard human diet. This situation worsened in 1955 when Ray Kroc opened the first McDonald's restaurant, causing SCPCN 2405 to enter a state where it could only consume food purchased from McDonald's restaurants violently vomiting and consuming any other food. Discovery SCP-CN-2405 was discovered in Haiju District, Gongzhou, China, outside a McDonald's restaurant. When it entered the restaurant to purchase food, SCP-CN-2405 was informed by the restaurant staff that McDonald's Corporation had prohibited any performances in the image of Ronald McDonald and was chased out of the establishment. As soon as SCPC and 2405 left the door, at least five million letters suddenly manifested above its head, covering it. The letters purported to be from healthcare professionals around the world and were but the consequences of McDonald's selling high-calorie foods to minors, including the bans that SCPC and 2405 was not employed at the time immediately retire. Following this, SCPC and 2405 was contained by the Foundation. Addendum SCPC and 2405 1 On 2003, August 1st, McDonald's Corporation announces that it had given Ronald McDonald the position of Chief Happiness Officer. The same day, SCPC and 2405 disappeared from its containment unit and reappeared 13 minutes later. Containment specialists interviewed it and ascertained that it intended to apply for the position of McDonald's Chief Happiness Officer at a McDonald's restaurant in Sumjun, China but was rejected on the grounds that it did not fit the image. Following this, SCPC and 2405 has not disclosed further details and has been unwilling to leave its holding cell. Addendum SCPC and 2405 2 On 2012, February 11th, the Finnish radical organization Food Liberation Army stole an image of Ronald McDonald outside a McDonald's restaurant and held stinky, and later destroyed it by beheading. The same day, SCPC N 2405 was found unconscious in its containment unit, having suffered blunt force trauma to the head from behind. The containment unit was flooded with over 20 tons of Pepsi. Following this, the rescue team found a note inside SCPC and 2405's shoe. We want you to release the footage of you being delivered. We want you to release how much waste is generated by eating McDonald's fast food. Why are you so burdened with obesity? Why do you not seek ways to prevent obesity? Following this, SCPC and 2405's mental state has become Become much more severe, and it has begun to refuse food and attempts at conversation. And it has begun to refuse food and attempts at conversation. The perpetrators and their intentions are currently being identified. Item number SCPCN 2406, Object Class Euclid, Special Academic Procedures, Foundation Robot, Batala is to monitor online communities and historical records in real time 
and any image searches or tampering is to be prevented. Affected documents are held in Standard Holding Unit 22316 at Site CEN75. Current containment efforts are primarily focused on affected documents and inducing loss of faith in holiday culture. Description SCPCN 2406 is a series of retroactive anomalies manifesting as the distortion of the historical record of St. Grimace and the culture derived thereof. These anomalies typically manifested as large scale changes to documents held in museums and libraries, covering or destruction of paintings and buildings and the changing of the holy water and melics in McDonald's restaurants and Alsace, Sumjern, and the Jerusalem region to Pepsi. In affected documents, Sin Grimace, who anomalously aided the poor, has been replaced with a subject known as Sin Nicholas, and a big Mac he threw from the window to aid a farmer has been replaced with a gold nugget in a shoebox. His attendant, Betty, who presented the three daughters of the farmer with a medium Coca-Cola, became Krappus. In addition, the historical record of the character became more brutal and increased in its description of the punishment given to bad children. The original main reason for punishment was rejecting the offered Coca-Cola and Big Mac and instead accepting Colonel Harlan Sanders, POI, 3250s, Pepsi and Fried Chicken. According to historical records, more than 2 million children have been punished by Krampus, and of them, 87.69% have grown up suffering from fatty liver and obesity as a result. St. Grimace Day, a religious observance influenced by the life of St. Grimace, has changed dramatically in the Asia-Pacific region, with families in homes with chimneys placing red stockings over their beds receiving a freshly made Big Mac in the stockings the next day. The annual holiday custom of eating a Big Mac on the 6th of December has been replaced with bedtime wishes of free gifts and shopping sprees. With the following customs being affected, eating a Big Mac set in the morning each day, gathering and singing praises to St. Grimace, Greeting strangers in a McDonald's restaurant. Praises and smiles offered in Samaria. Selling everything and distributing the returns to the poor. Three buckets of Coca-Cola are thrown down the chimney. Affected holiday practices were widely denied and criticized, and the compulsive disgust spread in the affected areas, becoming so common as to form general consensus, resulting in massive clashes of beliefs between affected and unaffected regions, the idea of reinterpreting traditional holidays in the context of the new century became widespread, and the idea of eating McDonald's on that day became seen as an act of blasphemy. On 2010, March 28th, the body of St. Grimace, buried in Dewpoint Abbey in County Kilkenny, Ireland, change from traces of Yam Mochik to a male corpse in an extreme state of decomposition. When found, he was wearing a red robe, a red hat with white trim, a walking stick in his left hand, and a can of Pepsi in his right hand. The source of the entity and the cause of this effect is currently under investigation. And people present at the scene reported hearing a constant male laughter that night. Deer hoof prints and slave tracks were found outside Deer Point Abbey. Some believe this is caused by the same anomaly as SCP-CN-2406. Addendum On 2021, December 25th, online communities suddenly began to question the nature of Christmas on the internet, which was believed to be a result of dissatisfaction with the seasonal meals released by McDonald's. These doubts began to spread, leading to a massive march against McDonald's restaurants, with the following demands being made against McDonald's Corporation. The holding of events to honor the memory of St. Grimace on December 6th every year. A double cheeseburger set with Coke and no ice every December 25th. 
for washing of one's body with yamokshik, but without wasting food. The aid of the poor by giving them a fillet of fish to eat, bringing joy to everyone by maintaining a smile. The clumsy, somewhat aloof nature of Sin Grimace is really cute, meaning alone. As the result of this incident, the online information affected by SCPCN 2406 has been discredited and no longer has any anomalous effect. However, about 46% of the people involved boycotted Christmas on the grounds that McDonald's only serves Coca-Cola and not Pepsi, and accusing it of being a consumerist trap. The idea that the celebration of the birth of POI 3250 should replace Christmas began to circulate and gain widespread acceptance. It is currently unknown if POI 3250 is the target of SCPCN 2406's effects. However, he is currently being monitored. Item number SCP-ES-297 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Curative and preventative responses to SCP-ES-297 have largely failed. The Foundation's current efforts are coordinated towards observing infection patterns in case an exploitable weakness manifests itself. Standard procedures for the broken masquerade class scenarios created by the SCP-ES-297 pandemic is to anesthetize and evacuate civilians from the area. Site-19 update, Site-34 maintains an electronic record of all SCP-ES-297-1 locations, updating as necessary when an SCP-ES-297-1 is created. Description SCP-ES-297 is an infectious phenomenon that affects architecture inhabited or otherwise used by humans. Infections typically start in restaurants, cafes, and other food establishments, hereafter referred to as SCP-ES-297-1, before spreading to the venue's cash register, which will display messages saying thank you for choosing Taco Bell. The infected locations menu will expand to include items typical of SCP-ES-297-2 establishments, such as tacos, burritos, etc. Over the course of 8 to 13 months, the location of SCP-ES-297-1 will undergo a self-contained structural reorganization to resemble in appearance a standard SCP-ES-297-2 location. SCP-ES-297-2 is a concept of the Taco Bell fast food restaurant chain. History The first host of SCP-ES-297 as a pizza restaurant in Downey, California, which lies. Update Lysis is a breakdown of a cell membrane, often by fibro and somatic or osmotic mechanisms that compromise its integrity. In one SCP-ES-297-2 instance, on the 5th of March, 1963, as the incident was originally believed to be a single unexplained event that took place over months, no amnestics were administered. The restaurant was allowed to reopen because the owners and employees had lost all memory of the previous restaurant's existence and believed that SCP-ES-297-2 had been open since the beginning of the year. SCP-ES-297 continued to increase in virulence and host numbers undetected until 1967 when 10 locally owned restaurants were simultaneously infected, closing and reopening as SCP-ES-297-2 instances in a similar time frame. Early curative efforts consisted of exploiting pre-existing bureaucratic channels to prevent the spread of SCP-ES-297 and potentially sterilizing already infected sites. Treatment efforts included, among other things, lawsuits, late health inspections, and ingredient recalls. None of these were effective. Competing restaurant chains, Kadaba, Chipotle, and Moe's 
Southwest Grill were funded by foundation front companies to compete with SCPES 297, but this strategy became unreliable due to constant mutations of SCPES 297-2 in the form of sales and special events. Below is a table of dates and notable mutations and events regarding SCPES 297. Item 1. A bridge register of notable SCPES 2972 instances. Downey, California, previous settlement. Unknown, local pizza restaurant. March 5th, 1963. The first recorded infection of SCPES 297. Downey, California, previous settlement. Multiple restaurants. July 13th. 1963, discovery of the infectious properties of SCPES 297. All restaurants in Downey, California were affected. Austin, Texas, previous settlement, Burger King, fast food chain, April 7th, 1972. First active attempt to stop the spread of SCPES 297-1. Containment attempt, the Foundation's resources were tactically deployed in the local court system to encourage closure following the introduction of rats and mold spores through the roof ventilation. Despite overwhelming evidence, no closure was made. Further investigation revealed that employees of the local US FDA office had repeatedly visited the facility over the past six months. Albuquerque, New Mexico Previous Settlement Chile's First New Mexico Bank March 4th, 1986 First manifestation of cross-construction Three instances manifested side by side over the course of two months progressively disintegrated the walls separating each structure until all three hosts merged into one SCPES 297-2 instance Hoover, Alabama Previous Settlement Water and Co. Auto Repair Shop Car Repair Workshop October 10th, 1992 First SCPES 297-1 instance completely not associated with food Mexico City, Mexico Previous Settlement Carlos and Charlie's Restaurant June 4th, 1993 the Mexican government by chance became aware of SCPES 297 and attempted to force the chain to close. This invariably caused all government officials to be unable to perceive SCPES 297. Furthermore, all existing SCPES 297 documents in Mexico were deleted. It is worth mentioning that SCPES 297 has shown an increase in infection rates in the country since this event. Irving, California, previous settlements, multiple businesses, February 2nd, 1994, rapid conversion of a corporate building into an SCPES 297-1 instance. The individuals affected by SCPES 297 at this location claim to represent Taco Bell at various executive levels, with one individual claiming the title of CEO. Following this conversion, the Foundation investigated all individuals claiming to be high level officials of the corporation. All of the subjects concerned were former employees of the various companies that rented office space in the building, and there was little or no suspected anonymous activity or prior involvement with SCPES 297. Continued Location Register Three Portlands Previous Settlement Rockers Rock and Rocky Road Ice Cream Parlor November 18th, 1998 First SCPES 297 1 instance appearing in an anomalous community. Containment attempt. The Foundation's resources attempted to coerce the FBI UIU to force the closure of the instance, which was rejected. 
Further investigation noted several SCPES-2972 instances located in the vicinity of the UIU headquarters in Washington, D.C. It is unclear to what extent SCPES-297 has affected groups of interest. Munich, Germany Previous settlement Spicy Crust Pizzeria Foundation's Front Company May 8, 2000 First Foundation Front Company that has been compromised. Containment attempt. Foundation agents deployed to incinerate the facility. Despite their success, the instance was rebuilt over the next six months and resumed operations. July 26, 2003. The Ambrose Restaurant's GOI ceased activity. All establishments have been transformed into SCPES. 297-2 instances. Paris, France. April 1st, 2006. The city of Paris is lost. All buildings are now SCPES 297-2 instances. Containment attempt. Complete quarantine of the city of Paris established. Deemed a failure after a new SCPES 297-1 instance discovered one kilometer away in the city of Versailles. A broken masquerade scenario was declared through internal foundation channels and a media statement was prepared. Beep. Previous settlement, Site 19. January 26, 2007. Site 19 becomes an SCPES 297-1 instance and all staff are lost. SCPES 297 file has been updated. Combo number 297. Object class delicious. Only $5.99. Special seasoning preparations. To prepare a beefy crunchy taco supreme, first retrieve a crunchy taco shell from the top reservoir and place it on the line rack. Next, Use the blue-handled spoon to scoop a single portion of seasoned beef from your container. Once done, move your taco to the seasoning station. At the seasoning station, the taco will first be coated with a single shot of the sour cream gun. Next, add a pinch of three fingers of delicious iceberg lettuce, as shown in the onboard video. Now, add a pinch of two fingers of grated cheese and diced tomatoes each, as demonstrated. Once done, move it to the wrap station, where the taco will be carefully folded into a single wax paper wrapper, folded in a three-step motion, as demonstrated in the onboard video. And just like that, it's done! Nutritional data, serving size, one combo. Three tacos, 327.4 grams, quantity per serving, calories 570, fat calories 290, total fat 32 grams, 49% daily value, saturated fat 13 grams, 65% daily value, trans fat 1 gram, cholesterol 85 milligrams, 28% daily value. Sodium, 1,010 milligrams, 42% daily value. Total carbohydrates, 46 grams, 15% daily value. Dietary fiber, 10 grams, 40% daily value. Sugars, 5 grams. Protein, protein, 24 grams. Vitamin A, 35% daily value. Vitamin C, 15% daily value. Calcium, 25% daily value. Iron, 15% daily value. Allergenic information, milk, soy, gluten, egg, fish, seafood, walnuts, peanuts, wheat, GMS. Ingredients, seasoned beef, beef. Water, seasonings, cellulose, chili, matrotrextrin, salt, oats, soy lecithin, spices, tomato powder, sugar, onion powder, citric acid, 
natural flavors, including smoke flavor. Tabula East, cocoa, disodium alucinate and glutinate. Dextrose, lactic acid, modified cornstarch. Salt, sodium phosphates, contains soy, reduced fat sour cream, milk, cream, modified cornstarch, lactic acid, maltodextrin, citric acid, sodium phosphate, natural flavor, cellulose gel potassium sorbate, cellulose gum, gall gum, locust bean gum, carrageenan, vitamin A, veins milk, certified vegetarian, iceberg lettuce, fresh iceberg lettuce, certified vegetarian, taco shells, ground corn, vegetable oil, soybean, corn, and or corn seed. Oak fiber, certified vegetarian. Tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, certified vegetarian. Cheese, fresh tomatoes, certified vegetarian. Cheese, fresh tomatoes, certified vegetarian. Certified vegetarian. Cheddar cheese, cheddar cheese, coated pasteurized milk. Salt, enzymes, anato, VZ. Anti-kicking agent, contains milk, certified vegetarian. Special offer. Are you a Taco Bell fan? For a limited time only, you can win this hoodie. Details here.